the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Saturday, January 30th, 2021. So continuing on last uh, conversation, the effects of building a new sports economy around sports performance investing will not be confined just to sports. Think about the way um, the effect of eBay or Amazon or that kind of a business has. Um, It's not just confined to the products and services they sell, but it creates an entire ecosystem around it in every related industry. So you don't have to be sports interested to benefit from a new economy built around sports performance investing. This is basically a jobs and infrastructure plan, a green new deal of sorts, if you want to look at it that way. So the gambling faction is puffing pretty heavily right now because earnings season is coming up. Q4 results are starting to come in. There's all kinds of talk about any bill that may or may not be advancing in Michigan, for example, Michigan, Virginia, Louisiana, Nebraska, New York. Um, That always happens right before earnings. And uh, earnings have not been very good. I'll get to that in just a second. There's one major report out already. But keep this in mind. Any advance in the sports gambling space in terms of the legality actually makes it easier for us because it is a flat up and down illegal proposition on the federal level. Again, back to the Wire Act. I'm not going to let this go. That law is in place. We either have laws or we don't. Um, That's still in place. So these aggressive advances by the gambling faction actually credit towards us. Um, First, in the legal side, in, in warming up the public. And second, uh, in building a customer base, basically doing our job for us. So it's gambling has been around for a very long time. This is not a sprint race between us and them. Uh, they were around for hundreds of years before we came along. So the idea here is to pivot from bet to, to bet or gamble to invest. That's, that's the job. And it's just one word, and it's a word that people are already familiar with. Also, the courts have moved way to the right from the last administration. The effect of that is not yet known by anyone, and anyone who says otherwise is just making it up, because we don't know. Nobody knows what the reaction is going to be from the courts. We haven't seen courts this far on the right, not in my lifetime, and maybe never. So that remains to be seen. The Vegas handle is down in 2020 over the previous year. Now, if all of that action had moved online, then why is the handle down? You can say, well, people are not showing up at the casinos, but these are consolidated results, which means it's online and offline, and the gambling handle is down. DraftKings will be reporting their non-earnings very soon. It, I'm expecting any any week now. It's it, I think in February is the last mention of the date. All kinds of puffery, puff, 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 puff. This happens every single time. And the last three quarters that I've called the results, I've called it pretty accurately on how far they missed. They're going to miss again. So uh, at this point, I don't know exactly, maybe 50%. It's probably, I think, going to miss by about 50%. So we'll see. Um, They missed by 100% last in the third quarter. So we'll see now that football's online and all the rest, almost the full slate of action is, is out there. I'm still saying that uh, gambling is not, the, the general public is not engaging in this to normal levels because they're very anxious about the economy. I can see changes of behavior on all sports markets that tell me that that's the case. If it's happening to us, it's happening everywhere. Uh, I've been watching all sports market for 15 years, well, not counting the, the downtime of, of 2008 to 2013, but two basically six or seven year spans. And I know that you know, a rising or sinking ship, you know, moves at the same rate. So uh, activities tend to track along the same path. So when our activity goes down, everything goes down. When our activity goes up, everything is going up. So I do not believe that the gambling business is doing the rocking business that they claim. Uh, I've seen man on the street videos uh, from Vegas, and it's still a ghost town. I believe you're going to see accounting scandals out the wazoo. Uh, I think that that has been brought on by very bad signaling from the from the administration, the presidential administration of the last few years, that lawlessness is okay. So I think you're going to see a lot of scandals that are going to be coming on the back side of this where numbers have been misreported and that sort of thing. If you want to look up a huge one that happened a few years ago, look at the LIBOR scandal. 
So I think you're going to see that where it's just been flat out lies uh, to keep the stock prices pumped up uh, because everybody thinks that was just fine. And I think a lot of them were anticipating that Trump would be reelected, which did not happen. Uh, Sands revenues are down. Now, this is not profits. So this is not playing games with profitability. That's a whole different conversation. Revenues. Okay. Top line revenues on the Sands. Remember, that's uh, the late Sheldon Adelson's enterprise down almost 70% in the last quarter. Revenues down almost 70%. That's huge. Huge. I mean, it's catastrophically huge. So we'll see where the online guys come in on this, but I would be extremely surprised if if it's anything but bad with a lot of excuse making. Actually, they're already doing that. They're already front loading it, trying to explain, well, you know, you got to be looking at the long term and it's a lot of should, you know, if you look at the news pieces, it's a lot of should should have been, could have been, will be, you know, they're hedging, 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 hedging their their words, which means that the whisper number, which if you're in Wall Street, in the game of Wall Street, that means the whisper number is not good. Okay, so uh, another thing, you know, people do not brag in the same way they don't brag about smoking. You, you don't see people do. I mean, in pretty much my entire adult lifetime, it has not been okay to brag about being a cigarette smoker. Okay. In the same way, gambling is the same. People do not brag about this. This is not something that you go around telling all your friends about. So again, back to the bet gamble versus invest. That is the core proposition here. On the other hand, it is very much okay and socially acceptable. And what people like to do is brag about their investing prowess and how well their investments are doing. And that's our space. Okay. So the social stigma of gambling is not going to go away. It's been pretty much eternal. Uh, even if you look back into early history, I mean, when I mean early, like right near the uh, beginning of, of the millennium, not this millennium, but the last millennium, and even you go back even further than that, this is not a practice that is socially embraced, just like smoking. Whereas investing in all categories is something that you will bring to a dinner party. So the big news in the last few days, which is really kind of interesting to examine a little closer, is all of this um, GameStop business and the Reddit uh, effect. Uh, there's going to be a huge, it's already happening, I see congressional hearings have been called on this. You cannot have an anonymous mob, which is essentially what Reddit is in its, in its, for, in its current form, an anonymous mob manipulating stock prices. That's just not, there's no way the regulators are going to let that stand, nor should they. Uh, you're going to cause all kinds of losses. Now that there's been this huge headline story about this that everybody knows about, it's going to bring people out of the woodwork doing the same thing. Now, stock pimping on, on chat boards is nothing new. I mean, I saw that when uh, I was day trading in the late 1990s. But never has it been on the scale of this Wall Street bets, which that's another problem is, is this conflation of betting and investing, which we're going to have to get way into um, and I'm getting into in the book. Uh, actually, books, there's two parts. The first part is going to be released on July 4th and the second part is going to be released on Christmas uh, of this year. Uh, we got to cover that concept uh, because there's a lot of conflation going on between those and confusion going on between those things trying to equate Wall Street to gambling. Now, you can use Wall Street investing to gamble, but that's not its function. Again, we come back to uh, you know, building a new market so that sports teams can be funded through uh, floating their uh, teams on our marketplace by investing in sports performance. That's not w what gamble means. And so, so anyway, it is kind of complex, and I actually see what I think is a intentional effort to confuse the public on this and make it all the same thing so that betting and gambling are the same thing. Also, that's why we just put a comment uh, in front of the CFTC on the NFL futures contracts because they're really trying to get these things all mixed together, which is completely wrong on, on so many levels, which again will be the subject of future podcasts and other materials. So, uh, but what's, um, what's really going on here with the, with this, uh, you know, effort through GameStop and the Reddit mob, basically. I, I It comes back to the original problem, you know, this uh, that I covered on the last podcast and previous podcast, which is the us versus them, the 
uh, the lack of the American dream not living up to the advertising. That that is, I think this is still part of the same thing. It's a revolt against the system. Now, there's a lot of reasons to be uh, angry at the system and to feel okay with taking billions of dollars out of hedge fund managers' pockets. I actually agree with that sentiment. I I do think the system is stacked against the common man, and it has been for a very long time. I think these are all functions of the same thing. And again, uh, back to creating new opportunity. I think when when we create new opportunity around sports that everybody can access without uh, any special talents and all they really need is the grit and the and the time investment because quite literally the tools are all there. I mean, we really live in a world where it's absolutely incredible that you can sit with your mobile phone and build a business from zero and access the entire world. Um, I still marvel over that even though I deal with it every single day. It's uh, it's putting putting the right back back in system there so that this uh, sports knowledge can be captured and and begin to level the playing field. So. In sum, I think that that's again, it's it's part of this. It's another symptom of the of the problem of of an unequal distribution of wealth, which is only getting worse. In fact, in the pandemic, it's gotten far worse. Um, you know, the 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 spreads between the haves and the have-nots has only gone wider. It's wider now than it's been in an extremely long time. It's in my lifetime for sure, and I'm not I'm not totally sure if that isn't for the entire history of the republic. It's really completely out of hand. So, um, and then Robinhood, now you, you know, Robinhood did a sudden $1 billion cash call. Don't mistake what that was. They got caught with their pants down. They were not able to cover redemptions and they went out to the public markets to raise money to cover their ass. That's what they did. Okay. That's what they did. That, that this is not a, uh, market expansion opportunity. This is, oh my goodness, we got caught with our pants down. And so that's why you, you see that. And I, I would expect the regulators are going to dig into this because that means that they were they were over leveraged uh, per their their charter or their licenses and they had to raise a thousand million dollars like instantly. So this is not a positive thing, folks. Um, Robinhood's got some issues. Um, they've had is- SEC issues already with their business model. Um, when I first saw their business model, I said they're selling the order flow. Anybody that's in the Wall Street game knows what that means. That means you're not getting the best price. They're they're getting between you and the market and and making the, making spreads that you don't even know. So this is going to be there's going to be a backlash here. Um, the, you know this is like um, raising raising money that you shouldn't have had to raise. Uh, should not have been necessary. So I bet that SEC is going to file a complaint against them. So we filed uh, last week, and uh, pr- principally this is the author. The authorship of this is uh, is uh, Alper and Chad. Even though I signed on the bottom line, the uh, comment to the CFTC, which if anybody remembers from from the prior uh, pre pre two thousand eight period, uh, that was the regulator we were uh, working with for the SRI futures contracts. Uh, we put up a very significant comment against that. Uh, they're trying to again, it's trying to mix together the concepts of betting and investing and produce an NFL futures contract. Uh, and we put out a 20-something page comment on that, uh, which you can see in the on the NewSportsEconomy.com website, which is in the show notes, along with the other resources. So uh, China just executed somebody for a government bribery scandal. Um, you know, I, I think that's a bit extreme for a financial crime, but compared to where we are, which is letting people in the public trust get away with everything under the sun and not doing anything to them, I think these are two extremes. Uh, we're on the extreme lax side of the equation, which is wrong, and and China's on the a uh, little bit too heavy-handed side. But I'll tell you what: if you knew you you ran the chance of being executed for uh, for public corruption, public corruption would come way down. So if uh, you find this information uh, interesting, useful, uh, please pass it around. Uh, you know the in every time the uh, show notes, there are going to be the links to the current resources and anything that we want to mention. That's where you'll find it is in the show notes. Uh, If you like it, please click like and review it and review it honestly. If you don't like it, if you think it's garbage, whatever, I'm not afraid of, of, of public opinion. So put whatever you like. Um, And then subscribe if you want to be notified, you know, when the next podcast comes out, it's not really on a regular schedule. Uh, Officially looks like about every seven to 10 days, but I'm, I'm really looking at it from a perspective of, is there enough to say? 
in order to uh, to put this out because I know everybody's busy and I don't want to use any more time than is necessary. So thank you for your time and uh, please do stay safe with your friends and your family. We are far from done with this uh, deadly pandemic. Bye now.